Have you ever wondered why pilots flying jets always set takeoff thrust using a two-step process? Stay tuned and find out! Hello folks, welcome back to the Aircraft Performance channel for another video podcast in English. My name is Thiago Brenner and on this video we're going to talk about why pilots follow this procedure when setting takeoff thrust. Okay, in order to understand why the pilot must follow this two-step process, we first need to understand the difference between a jet engine and a piston engine. On a piston engine, when the pilot gets the throttle lever and pushes it forward, what happens is that the response of this engine is almost immediate. Uh, you push the throttle and there is thrust almost immediately available to you. It's almost like driving your car. You push the pedal to the metal and the thrust is already there. But when you were flying, a jet engine is not quite like this. When you're on the ground and push the thrust lever all the way forward, the response is very, very, very slow. But not all the way through. In fact, there is a steep curve to the acceleration of the jet engine. And it will work like this. Take a look at this graphic on my right here. The graph shows N1 rotation versus time. And you can see that starting from idle, about 20 something percent, the engine will accelerate very, very slowly until reaching a certain point at about 40% rotation N1. And from this moment on, the engine will respond very quickly, almost as a piston engine would from the beginning. And that's the big issue. Consider a twin engine with one engine under each wing. If you take the thrust lever from idle to full forward position, to firewall as we say on Boeing airplanes, should both engines accelerate equally, there would be no problem at all. But should one engine reach the starting point of accelerating very slowly from accelerating very rapidly one and a half seconds earlier, well, one and a half seconds later, the engine that reached this point first would be at 90 something percent rotation and one and the other would still be at 50 percent and this huge amount of thrust would certainly drive the pilot off the runway it's gonna be a veer off and i don't know if you know that but this is the major cause of veer off incidents on aviation it is not Guest, it is not engine failure, it is pilots not paying attention to follow the two-step process during uh, the setting of the takeoff thrust. Now let me show you using a thrust lever as an example here and an engine instrument. Well, uh, suppose that this engine instrument is the N1 rotation and if I move the thrust levers here you will see a bug that is the required N1 rotation for this thrust lever position. Should I accelerate full forward at uh, the beginning of takeoff without giving the engine some time to stabilize both at this transition point? What could happen is one engine reaching this point before the other, as you saw on the, on the previous graphic. But now you will see that this engine will respawn and the N1 will spool up very, very fast, while the other will take a much longer time to spool up. And this is a major issue. This huge amount of thrust asymmetry with hardly no speed will likely drive the airplane off the runway to the side of the runway. And no matter how fast the pilot reacts pulling back their thrust levers, because just as the engine will take much longer to spool up than a piston engine, it will do just the same while spooling down, it will take much longer. So the engine that has accelerated already 
will take much longer to slow down and will continue to produce some thrust driving the pilot off the runway. So what should the pilot do? The pilot would make a first step of this process, advancing the thrust levers to demand a rotation of N1, a rotation of the engine that is above this transition point at Boeing airplanes, normally about 40%, and then push the toggle switch, advancing the thrust levers all the way forward to the takeoff position. And from this moment on, both engines should accelerate at equal rate. But you might ask, and what about the go-around procedure or a terrain avoidance procedure? Should the pilot have the thrust lever at idle and decide to move it full forward for a go-around or for a terrain avoidance or for a wind shear avoidance, if one engine comes into full thrust long before the other, will the same thing happen? Will uh, the lack of control be a problem? Yes, it will. But the engineers have thought about that. And in what way they figure to solve this kind of problem? Well, there are several idle regimes. The idle regime that was set to the airplane on the ground is known as the ground idle. That is a very low idle just to keep the engines running and the systems working. But the flight idle is a higher value of idle just for the airplane to have a small amount of slow acceleration. And the approach idle is even higher, trying to eliminate this slow acceleration region. So you will see always when the airplane is approaching a much higher value of idle thrust than you would see on the ground. Folks, let me remind you that everything I just told you here on this video and everything I've been telling you on the other videos are available to you on this book, The Aircraft Performance Weight and Balance. It is available to purchase worldwide, either on Amazon or Apple, on digital format and on paper. Please check the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, remember to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet, and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any of the future videos. Every time the video is posted in English here on the channel, this will be in front of the title. Follow me on my social media. Thanks a lot and bye-bye.